Hello everyone, uh, my name is Dominic and I'm from the Palacki University in Olomouc. Uh, let me just quickly say thank you to the organizers for having me and even though uh, I am in the QKD session, you can enjoy a short talk about entanglement detection, which is a work done together with uh, Miroslav Ježek, uh, the leader uh, of the experimental group uh, Quantum Optics Lab Olomouc. And as you can hopefully uh, all see, I will be talking about quantification of quantum entanglement uh, from incomplete measurements uh, with deep learning. Uh, we already saw a few great talks concerning entanglement. The last one from Anna just a few minutes ago. So let me just say that entanglement plays a crucial role in many applications of quantum physics uh, ranging from quantum computing through QKD to enhance metrology. And so, so uh, it's uh, the knowledge about the level of entanglement present in the system is uh, necessary uh, for proper executions of all those protocols. Uh, so in our research, uh, or our research is more on the fundamental side since we came with the deep neural network based estimator that allow us to uh, characterize or detect uh, universally the level of entanglement, universally meaning uh, that in a state independent way uh, that is present in the system just from few local uh, single copy measurements. If you would like to quantify uh, an entanglement, you are kind of forced to work with the systems of made of two qubits or qubit qubit systems at most, because uh, in really uh, high dimensional Hilbert spaces, we really don't know much about uh, how to quantify entanglement. What we can do is essentially an entanglement witnessing, but then we will get only a yes or no answer and witnesses are also uh, state dependent. Uh, in the following slides, I will work with the two qubit monotone entanglement measure uh, concurrence. Uh, as a proper measure, concurrence will give you a zero if the quantum state is separable and one if the state of the source is maximally entangled state. So to calculate such a quantity, you would need to know what the quantum state is you would need to do a tomography. However, I highlighted the uh, invariance property of concurrence under the local unitaries, meaning that for all such a states, the concurrence is the same. So it gives us, the, gives us hope that we do not have to uh, know everything about uh, the quantum state to calculate correctly the concurrence. Um, of course, we are not the first one who uh, tries to deal with uh, entanglement detection. There is nearly 20 years of research in this realm. However, most of the presented schemes uh, on entanglement detection uh, relies, rely on uh, preparing multiple copies of entangled states followed, with, followed by a rather complicated uh, interference setups. Uh, the goal is to work only with uh, single copy observables. So let me just highlight the work from uh, 2016 by the group of Raymond Laflamme, where they showed that for every uh, insufficient statistics, uh, there exist at least two states compatible with your data, one entangled and one separable. Uh, however, uh, the question, what is, what is the best, what we can do with uh, incomplete measurement is still open. And in the following slides, I would like to show you our approach to this problem. Uh, since it uh, turns out that the Uh, that the tomography is uh, necessary. We will use it as a baseline to compare our results with. 
and tomography uh, just very quickly works as follow. You basically try to collect uh, as many measurements as possible uh, and feed those collected data into the maximum, for example, maximum likelihood procedure, which will give you the uh, most likely uh, description of your source. And uh, then uh, using uh, the formula I showed you a few slides ago, you can uh, calculate the concurrence. Uh, this approach, however, has a flaw that if you remove some of those measurements, uh, the information about the level of entanglement uh, get lost pretty quickly, as we will see. Uh, so instead of characterize, characterize, characterizing the source first, we built a deep neural network, which is essentially a trainable multi-layer, highly nonlinear transformation that learns to predict, uh, in our case, uh, the concurrence of the source from the given set of uh, probabilities. Uh, we choose the measurement to be made of projections into agent states of uh, Pauli operators, which in the systems of photonic qubits can be represented by uh, polarization states. So you would just really need to uh, measure locally the polarization of incoming photons, which is a feasible experimental scheme. Oh. So now finally, uh, some of the results. So we trained in total 18 uh, deep neural networks, each one inferring the concurrence, but from the variable uh, number of probabilities at the input, ranging from full tomography, uh, which uh, is uh, all 36 uh, projectors down to only two. Uh, in the figure, we can see the comparison between deep neural network approach and uh, maximum likelihood tomography as we depict the absolute difference between true and uh, predicted values of uh, of concurrence, uh, averaged over 5,000 randomly generated uh, uh, mixed states with the depicted uncertainty region of uh, one sigma. Mm. Uh, what is really surprising is that the deep neural network with only, let's say, 10 input probabilities uh, can uh, predict the, con the value of concurrence with the same accuracy at the same order as from uh, full projectors. And as I said before, we can see that if you just discard a few projectors, the tomographic approach fails on average uh, to predict accurately, accurately uh, what the level of entanglement is. Mm. But each point, uh, as I said, on this uh, green curve represents uh, then a, a different deep neural network. So we ask ourselves uh, to build now a deep neural network that will predict a concurrence independently of the measurement device. This is now measurement device independent. A deep neural network has a first convolutional layer and the input data now consists uh, not only uh, just from just of probabilities, but also contain the information uh, in what basis we are taking a measurement. And also in the training that data set, we choose at random which uh, projectors will contribute to inferring concurrence. Uh, the mean average error for now a uh, measurement device independent uh, deep neural network is still lower uh, than for the tomographic approach, but by 
raising the information what projectors are we measuring a priori, the errors are higher than in the uh, measurement specific specific approach. Mm. Uh, finally, we tested our approaches on the never seen before quantum state, namely a Werner state for which the concurrence is a piecewise linear function of the parameter P that defines uh, how much noisy the system is. Uh, in, the, and in the figures, we can see the estimated values of concurrence uh, from different number of uh, Pauli projectors ranging from full tomography, so uh, 36 projectors down to, down to 10. Uh, compared to a uh, maximum likelihood approach, the deep neural networks predict uh, entanglement well, uh, even from uh, half the necessary projectors, as we can see in the figure C. Um, containing only like 18 projectors. And uh, the, what, what's uh, very in interesting to me that the um, measurement specific deep neural network, which works only with 10 projectors, will not overestimate uh, the value of concurrence in the region when there is no entanglement present in the system, uh, whereas uh, the maximum likelihood approach will tends to give us uh, quantum states that uh, corresponding uh, to your data that are entang entangled, even though um, the true state is uh, separable. Uh, I just uh, to sum up, uh, I, let me just conclude that with uh, that we come with the fast approach, uh, how to quantify the photonic entanglement sources. We also ran uh, our trained deep neural networks on the experimental data and, and the results looks extremely well. Certainly I do not have a, right now I can't show you the picture or the figure, but uh, of course we are uh, not bind only to predict uh, just a concurrence from incomplete measurements. We can predict uh, other integral quantities like of quantum states such as uh, tangle or entropy or even um, mutual information, which is uh, probably a well-known correlation measure for the people working in uh, QKD. And uh, this can uh, nicely generalize the mutual information can be generalized to the systems of uh, multiple qubits but it uh, because the Hilbert spaces, the Hilbert space of three qubits really tends uh, to, to get uh, big. So you, you can see that uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rough to uh, train a uh, network to predict uh, mutual information uh, in the system of three qubits. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, let me just thank you all for your attention. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me and I will try my best uh, to answer them. Definitely. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. And please, everybody, open your mic and applaud to Dominic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.